Hey, everyone, it's Ted Cantu. Welcome to the Miracle Mind Shift. Today is, drum roll, please, day 79. Wow. Yeah, day 79. Well, welcome to the show. I'm an ex-art director from Chicago, New York, and Detroit, and I worked in advertising for many years. Now I am a spiritual coach. Big stuff, man. I kind of like this this end of things a lot better because uh, every day is like getting more intense. And, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, eye-opening, challenging, and exciting. So welcome to the show. Where the journey is in you, the limitations are in you, and we're gonna bust right through them. My my head's itching today, and for good reason. Uh, we played around with our uh, chakras today, <laughs> and my crown chakras got gotten really affected. I went to a really interesting meditation class it was five hours long you imagine that five hours long and guess what i got the notes right here all the cool stuff yes uh i do want to get into that wow all right so i'm gonna share some of the stuff with you because i know i do have the tendency to be long-winded and i don't want to bore you to death so anyway i'm uh I gave you a brief introduction. The Miracle Mind Shift is a cool project. It's um, I reprogrammed my subconscious mind and I erased all the bad memories and all of the bad events that happened in my life to the point where I got a factory issued brain, right? Pretty much. I mean, it's like we're looking at uh, some really great authors right here. We cover stuff like Joe Dispenza. Who was one of my favorites? He's, we're talking about uh, becoming supernatural. Wow. And, you know, it's really funny is that on the show, uh, I had a bunch of quantum books that I bought. Oh, geez. Like almost like 20 years ago. And I didn't really know what they were. And I, I, <laughs> I bought them and I didn't throw them away or get rid of them. Borders Bookstore is long gone. And a lot of these books I bought from their section, they used to have the best buyer over there for subconscious mind stuff and for, uh, you know, uh, basically self-transformation books. They, they had the best book selection. Barnes & Noble doesn't really have it like they did. Uh, they have a self-transformation section too, but it's more like, you know, Wiccan stuff and witchcraft stuff that's self-transformation sure but it's very damaging it can be very very damaging you're going in the wrong direction and they got rid of their kabbalah books which is really disappointing so i think you're like getting really a, a disservice from them i was fortunate enough to be at the right place at the right time and get all the totally cool stuff myself and have really cool teachers around me. So anyway, enough of that stuff. Let's get going. Get a notebook. You're going to want to get a notebook. And you're going to want to take some notes today. Because I got some really cool things to share with you. First of all, it is day 79. And what am I talking about when it comes to day 79? That means that I'm on the 79th day of the self-transformation journey. Which we call the Miracle Mind Shift. And I'm on this thing because I want to see some change. I want to see some really great monumental change in my subconscious mind and my daily life and my daily experience. My dream life was a complete disaster. It was not syncing up with my regular daily life. There was no miracles on demand 
I couldn't see anything really moving significantly. And yet I had all these amazing tools and books and things at my disposal. And yet I was not able to really make any headway. So I simply picked up some of these books and looked at them. And I said, either this stuff is real or it's not. And if it's not, what am I doing with all this stuff? Maybe I should just have this big metaphysical yard sale. That was a joke. That was a joke. I used to say a long time ago when I dated this girl and I called her a spiritual junkie. And if you're watching this, I apologize, but this is the way I was. And this is the, that was the old me. And I said, one day we're going to have this gigantic metaphysical yard sale and we're going to sell all this crap. And, and I'm going to go back to Chicago and get my career back in advertising. Cause you drive me crazy. Anyway, um, that's not exactly what happened. But she did kind of get me on the road towards uh, metaphysical insanity. And I had to straighten it all out and get on the right road and the right path that made sense to me. And how did I know it was working? It was working because the right things started to show up in my life. At first, on a very small level, miracles were small, but they were accurate. And I was going for accuracy. And my nightlife changed from going to rock and roll clubs and, you know, swinging off chandeliers and whatnot, jumping off balconies. And, oh, my God, we were crazy back then. But I'll tell you what, my nightlife now really kind of goes back to the Zohar and uh, into really spiritual manifestation, meditation, and my dream. My dream life is my nightlife, and it syncs up to my day life. What I mean by that is that real people and my day life will appear in my dreams. Subconsciously, I'm able to work out problems in my dreams, and they're pretty accurate. I may share with another one of those things with you today because I got a lot to say. So let me just start the show, and then we'll just kind of go into it and see where we are. Fair enough? That's Ann Arbor behind me. That's the old, my old neighborhood, my old town. And I, I like, I, I may want to change the background, but I, I've been using it for quite a few different episodes, but it puts me in a happy place for the most part and also shows me how far I've grown since then. Which is a good thing to do it now and then. So let me just tell you something. So Christmas is really weird. In Michigan, Christmas goes on for about five months. I have nothing against Christmas. I love Christmas. I love Jesus. Just telling you the way it is. But the version of Christmas that most people hold on to starts August 31st. We're still in Christmas right now. For some of you who don't know that, we still got all of our Christmas lights up. People are not coming in the work. They're on vacation still, which is really weird. Uh, tomorrow starts a new work week. Um, a lot of places are still closed. So I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But anyway, and when it spills over into the new year, to me, it's just a sign of just mental illness. <laughs> Society gone wrong. Uh, I don't get it. In Chicago, the business clock is right on time. Actually, it was January 2nd. They went right back to work. New York was the same kind of way, the East Coast. But for some reason, Michigan is always just, just doesn't function. Anyway, here's what I was told. It's so crazy. Uh, and a family member says, I'm going to miss Christmas. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was Christmas for the last five months. I don't know what you're talking about. Costco. Started her thing in September, uh, August 31st. Her Christmas trees went up in, in Costco. It's been going on forever. Uh, Jay Towers and his music. Months of Santa Baby. And, oh, man, it's just awful. It's just poor taste, right? I mean, I would rather go with Advent, do it right, the day after Thanksgiving, I don't care. Just go crazy with the Christmas music if you want. Get into the spirit. But then after a while, you got to like kind of like, 
you know, pull the reins of the sleigh, so to speak, and get back to reality. And some people just take that reality and just go right off the deep end. Anyway, someone's like, well, what did you miss about Christmas? What did you miss about it? Uh, what, are you, what are you going to miss about it? Because I don't remember you watching any Christmas specials at all. Uh, and friends, too. Friends of mine fall in this category. They're watching ghost shows, UFO shows. I'm not kidding. This, this is the thing. Uh, JFK assassination shows. Who killed JFK? Serial killer shows. Um, and uh, forensic file shows. For like five months. Under the under this idea that oh let's put up our Christmas lights, get in front of the, uh, of the, <laughs> of the television, have some family time, quality time with uh, you know uh, Jeffrey Dahmer and uh, JFK and uh, Oswald and the uh, God it just is sickening man, and the ghost hunter shows and 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 forensic files and who killed who back in nineteen eighty seven. 95, court TV. Uh, terrible. This just went on. I put on some Manheim, Manheim steamroller. Or if you're going to watch shows about hell, why don't you put on some Heat Miser at least? I like Heat Miser. I mean, you know, it, it's kind of like Christmas. <laughs> Can we do that? No. No, that was the answer. And then the other thing I hear is this. It's like, uh, well, you know, uh, people tell me they're bored wow with all this bullshit going on I'm bored how can you be bored when all this stuff goes on don't you care about like the real meaning of Christmas the Holy Spirit inner dimensions of faith and healing miracle making Kabbalah the universe quantum field and aligning yourself with spirit. If you're going to talk about the holidays, man, come back to your senses, please. Come back to your senses and grab some reality. Beyond the 1% garbage that the mass media tries to produce and program your mind with absolute garbage. Reach into the 99% and stay closely aligned with spirit. To me, that's interesting. I, I never get bored. In fact, you know, uh, throughout the show, I get interruptions a lot. And when I was a kid, I used to have people knock on my door and they go, Teddy, come out to play. Can you can you come out to play? And I was always, I was always busy. I was like making movies out of paper. I was always like doing animation. I was into my art. I was into uh, painting when I got to be in my 20s. I was always doing something that I considered interesting. I never got bored. So those people, energetically, I still got some of that stuff around me. And I got to tell you that it's just really weird. And not to say that I'm a snob, although I am a snob, but I'm a snob about certain things. And... I'm greedy. I'm a selfish person. And I'm selfish the most chasing the light. The light, the Holy Spirit. And, and I gotta tell you, rabbis and priests will, will tell you <laughs> unanimously that is the only time in life you are allowed to be greedy. When you are greedy for the Holy Spirit. And you can't get enough. I mean, it must have been something, right? Because I... uh Grew up like a hooligan. Here's my Ann Arbor days behind me. And, I, and there's many stories about my wild life as a youth. I was like the eternal teenager. But um, got to the point where it wasn't enough. And I scrapped all that. Yeah, I don't even follow music anymore, which is really crazy. Uh, I don't follow it as much. And I gave up all partying and uh, the last the last real big holdout for me was cold beer and and chicken wings <laughs> be like uh and even like going to live baseball games i don't even go that 
anymore. I've really become introverted uh, in a sense. I mean, there's no other way to really put it. And I've changed my priorities all around. And I got addicted to uh, miracle making. And I also got a real sense of empathy for my fellow man. And when I see them in pain, I want to help them and share with them what I know. <sighs> What's going on with me, man? I must have been hit in the head, right? Or something. I was, by the way, many times. <laughs> uh, accidents altered my brain. Getting all that corrected now. Getting it all fixed. Golly, I got so much to tell you. So... With that being said, holidays are hopefully gone for now, or at least your version of the holidays. I, I still, I did, I had a holy holiday. I had a holy Christmas. I had peace. I, I had to set some boundaries, but I got it. And it's not easy. And, uh, wow. All right. So what did I do today? I'm going to keep track of my time here because I usually, oh, yeah. I usually kind of go over. I went to the treehouse today. I told you I was going to go. And the treehouse had a great meditation energy workshop. And it was taught by Miss Christine and Herman from The Ascension. So we did some memory meditation. We did some exercises about our physical space. And it started out pretty pretty awesome. And we did uh, an expanded awareness of our surroundings. And just try to remember where everything is as you meditate. Things that mean the most to you. Books, your belongings all your stuff. And then we had this uh, expansion contraction meditation. And that got really interesting because we were going out and exploring our magnetic field. Now, what does that mean? It means that when you meditate, you think of your aura, you think of your presence as being bigger than what it really is. It could be as big as this building, right? When we meditate, we close our eyes, about as big as this building. And then it goes beyond that to the outskirts of town. Yeah. And then it goes to the state, the whole state of Michigan. Imagine that. All four lakes, the Great Lakes, up, over, <laughs> higher and higher. As high as you want to go. Some of us went pretty high. We went uh, and covered our our reach all around the globe to expand our awareness, to give us strength, to give us a positive range of what's possible and build up our confidence. And then we bring it back down to the state to the town, to the building that we're in, back into the self. You wake back up. You feel energized, but more grounded. Because you got to remember, gravity pulls you down. The atmosphere above here is all about life and the upper world. A good, a good example of that is a tree. So a tree would actually have its roots grounded into the earth, right? But also the leaves catch all the photosynthesis and grows out the branches and the leaves and everything else. It just grows up. Grass is the same way. So we're grounded to know that our chakras are root chakra is is grounded in the earth and it goes deep into the earth 
And we're part of that. But we're also, we have mind expansion where we can reach into the quantum field and make incredible choices with ourselves and reach into that field of probabilities that we can't see by charging up our atoms. Wow. So the five ethers and sensory meditation, fire, water, which is like W-A-T-T-E-R because of the electrical charge in it, air, earth, and wood. Wow. And we start going into the earth to the central sun. Think about the hollow earth and the central sun theory. I mean, you're going back to thousands of years and we're talking about all the Buddhists that came out of that, of the earth, the Native Americans that came out of the earth. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty deep today. Really deep. Hinduism. But then also, uh, the universal sun and how that deals with uh, planets and life and energy. Man. Lots of stuff here. And we did 12, uh, what was it? Like 12 dimensions of the, of the self and the planes for meditation and how they relate to the chakras and uh, there was some mention here about the hollow earth thing that was going on with uh, it pops up in many different books about the world of Agartha which is a legendary city that is inside the earth's core also known as Shambhala and Shangri-La which is a place of peace and tranquility. <laughs> and there's entrances to this place been reported around the world, everywhere from Kentucky, the mammoth caves down there. There's Brazil. There's uh, Ecuador. There's also uh, an entrance in Brazil, uh, in Argentina, Italy, the Himalayan mountains, Mongolia, Rama, India, also the great pyramids of Giza, King Solomon's mines, and the North and South Pole, Mount Shasta, California, and the Daros Caves, which is really, really incredible. And uh, I got a picture of it right here. And this is interesting, too. This pops up in a lot of books that... Uh, when you get into the really, really deep study about meditation and 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 how old the earth is and all the legends and lores uh, of many different people, everywhere from the Buddhists, the Native Americans, India, Tibet, and of course Admiral Byrd, you know that story. You can Google all that stuff. And then today we got into the actual writings and theories of Rudolf Steiner. And it's kind of interesting because I've been studying about Steiner on the show. And wow. That's this is really deep stuff, man. So that was that was what we did there. And uh also I got some really great Really great. Um, really great news here about how to work with your chakras and what they do. Wow. Um, the seven super universes. We got some pictures here. And I thought this is kind of interesting. These pictures right here of the atom and how they spin. And 
depending on your thought, which doors you can actually open up with your true sense of belief. So let's say, for example, you're a person with low self-esteem or you're someone who just always feels like you're a victim or maybe just people just don't like you or maybe you want fame and you want to be respected on several different levels or you wish you could attain some sort of skill that would make you successful. <laughs> your thoughts are real things. Your thoughts can control your destiny. Looking at the brain, did you know you can actually meditate right down to the cell and give it instructions? That's what we did today. We actually went inward, like inner space, right? That term, right to the cell, giving it instructions and giving it commands. We also did that little experiment with uh, thought patterns, thought energy, where we made like a little, a uh, little umbrella made out of paper, spin, right or left. I would rather use metal, aluminum, metal. Uh, paper doesn't really seem to have much uh, connectivity, but we did ours with uh, a piece of cardboard a metal pin and a little paper umbrella. And we got it to work, but I really do think that when you have, uh, my personal favorite way to do it is a cork, a needle, and foil. Seems to work the best for metallic properties and for mental energy. And then we made our own pendulum, which works really well if you get the right kind of stones we we did we had two different uh types of beads i don't have it in front of me but i might put it on there later uh another episode and then we can look at it but that will actually give you the direction of where you want to go in anything life i mean you can ask it anything and it'll give you an answer yes or no you got to practice with it, but it works. Wow, it's a full day. We did five hours of this stuff. And then we did this uh, training right here of how to uh, train your third eye to uh, record color and to make it strong like a muscle for your, for your perceptions. Pretty cool stuff. The way it works is that you'd stare at this for like 60 seconds and you close your eyes and the colors would all reverse. Like this middle part would actually turn bright yellow. This would turn, this right here would turn bright red. And I believe this middle part was bright blue, this yellow. So red, blue, and, and, and yellow. It was cool. It's very dynamic. And I didn't know that was going to happen. But so the colors that you stare at when you're staring at this, when you close your eyes, it actually becomes um, the opposite of on the color wheel. And you'll see actual change. And that's great. I think that having all of your chakras and energy centers tuned up is an important thing. And to also be careful about what you put in your brain. And I got some really great uh, brain supplements over the weekend, and I'm trying them out because I want to fix my limbic brain. I want to fix the serotonin and the synapse there so I can become more patient. And I want to guard my emotions so it doesn't go driving into my major organs and uh, make me flip out or <laughs> act irrational or uh, all those other wonderful traits that came along with living in the East Coast where, where losing your mind is looked upon as a badge of honor. Chicago, too, for the most part. But the ability to flip out and yell at your fellow man and insult them and, or degrade them in any way possible, which was something I had to live through. I just don't want it in my energetic field anymore. 
I, I, I become addicted to peace. Instead of being addicted to drugs and alcohol and punk rock, I'm addicted to peace, tranquility, and resolve of ugly situations, problem solving, being in control, control, control. Let me share about control. This is Ian Curtis. The painting. Ian Curtis was somebody who could never, here we go, right here. He can never get control from Joy Division. He can never get a sense of control. He was epileptic. He was a drunk. He was somebody who suffered from mental illness and he hung himself. And I believe he was 23 years old when he did it. And Joy Division never signed their album contract, uh, their touring contract, I should say, to come to America. I heard stories. They were supposed to be on Saturday Night Live in 78. So were the Sex Pistols. But I don't think that's true. I think I think there was... Um, well, maybe they were. I did, they don't seem like a party band to me. <laughs> They're really dark and introspective and a lot of hints on suicide. They were like the early goth band. So, uh, but the concept of control obsessed Ian Curtis because the more he wanted it, the less of it he got. Now, that's interesting to me, too, as I'm older, because when you want serenity, when you want peace, but you're locked up in chemical substance, it evades you. And actually, instead of getting closer to it, closer, that was another one of his album titles. He can never get it. And out of frustration, he took his own life, leaving an infant child. He had a daughter and a wife. Because he couldn't get it. Couldn't reach it. Or he went about the wrong way. Legendary stuff. But those thoughts did cross my mind. What was he said? He said on the first album, Unknown Pleasures, Ian said something about, I've been waiting for someone to take me by the hand. You know. Uh, to show him this promise of a great life. I've been looking for a leader to take me by the hand. You know what's really weird about that, though, is that as true as that statement was for him, it's amazing to me how many people follow his footsteps knowing, knowing full well that he killed himself. And can never find peace. And yet, you, you listen to his poetry and his music and hold on to it like it's vital information, like it's going to take you to some great place. Okay, so let me just leave it there for a second because this goes back to my complaint about, about Christmas. I went out for five months. It had nothing to do with Christmas. But the people that I know that, that love it so much, they put their trees up in August or whatever. It was August. I'm pretty sure it was because I was watching the World Series. Uh, at <laughs> October, their trees were up. But they spent the whole time watching JFK assassination documentaries. 
one right after the other and stories about ghosts ghost hunters haunted prisons jeffrey dahmer uh ted bundy i mean uh, names that i don't want to repeat or say serial killers csi shows uh unbelievable man That's what they watched. And then they said, we're going to miss the holidays. What holidays? You missed the whole thing. It goes right back to what I think about Sam Kennison. He said, if you're going to miss heaven, don't miss it by an inch. Miss it completely. Just miss it. Enjoy yourself. Have a wild ride. and Just miss it completely. I think that's awful <laughs> you're gonna miss the whole thing we're talking about rock and roll here's another one jim morrison how many people how many people out there actually know you're alive he died when he was 27 he was not as prolific as everyone thinks because when it came to pain, he wouldn't deal with it head on. He would try to run away from it as far as he could. Interesting stuff here. So, uh, okay. So those are some random thoughts about meditation, rock and roll, Christmas, just to get your brain moving. And I, of course, I'm on day 79. So these thoughts become interesting to me because I'm actually looking at life a whole different way than what I used to. So this is me now. And this is where I was, Ann Arbor. Why do I wear the black shirt and the St. Michael's medal all the time? Why do I wear the same shirts? Kind of like I'm the new Lou Reed. <laughs> Transformed man, right? Right? I'm not wearing a padlock around my neck like Sid Vicious. I'm wearing a St. Michael's medal. But um, I'm just thinking about where I was, where I've gone, and uh, where I've been. Now, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Just get on the road. Even if you got like three wheels on the road, on, on, on the right road, you're going to be fine. It's enough to get you going. Just get your heart in the right place. And things will start to correct and start to form a clear path. Not right away, though. <laughs> it might take about 60 days, like for me. My dreams started to make sense after two months in. And I got some really good ones coming in. Um, there's got, uh, oh boy, I got some relationship advice from my father who died in 2007. Actually visited me in my dream to give me advice about my current current woman in my life. And it was very good advice. Real people will show up in your dreams. It won't be like nonsensical, surreal dreams. Real people in your life will actually show up and give you messages about your current life, which is really cool. They give you guidance. Uh... There was another thing I had about finding clients and it came out to uh, a newsletter that I have and it was very relevant. Um, the other thing I could tell you about, if you watch the other shows, you're able to wake up in the middle of the night, jump back into the same dream and see how it ends or see if you can uh, alter it in any way. And they're all good dreams. There are no nightmares. Unless 
unless you drink beer or wine or get high and then look out because it's going to disrupt all the hard work that you did and it's going to come crashing right over a cliff. And that's what happened to me. Ugh, to the point where I don't want to do that again. <laughs> and I used to be the biggest, well, not the biggest bar guy, but I used to like to go out and have fun and just get loud and crazy like a lot of other people. And especially at rock and roll shows, I used to really, really ham it up. And uh, I must have went to like over 300 rock shows. Big part of my life, I just turned my back on. And I lost a lot of friends, too, because of the change. But I'm not worried about that because uh, this is more fun. <laughs> and you know what? It's so funny because uh, it's still like, even if you do all this stuff, it's kind of like, well, you're not really in with any in crowd. You're still an outcast. So what difference does it make? I, like they hated you before you did it. Now that you're doing it, they still hate your guts. <laughs> but but the difference is the miracles that show up, the breaks in life that show up, the unexpected financial blessings that show up, the health benefit stuff that shows up, which is really crazy, and also the peace. It's probably the most addicting thing you've ever had in your life. If you've never experienced that, just like pure bliss of not being on anything. I don't know, man. It's like uh, I also wake up in the morning and I'm excited about what's going to come next. I'm excited about life because it's so unexpected and great. And I'm following really unique principles. There's about 18 of them when you run your business that the next big thing is right around the corner or the next person that you want to meet is around the corner and things snap into place like Legos. Things just fall into place. So to turn all that away and go, you know what? My miracles aren't as big as I want them to be. So I think this isn't going to be for me. I'm going to quit. <laughs> I'm not going to quit. But there are people who do that. They'll like resolutions for New Year's. They'll do it for like a couple of weeks. I'm going to go, well, you know, I didn't lose 300 pounds or whatever in two, in two weeks. So I'm going to quit I'm being facetious. Or I didn't get that big raise, that corner suite office in two weeks. So I guess I'm just going to give up my job of ever running my own company. Wow. Don't do that. Stay, stay in the fight. Because it's worth it. And the things that come out of this is incredible. I just wish I would have been able to put all these pieces together when I was younger. But it doesn't matter because you can time travel. When you know how to work with the light, you can time travel. And what I mean by that, you can skip over bad situations right in front of you. You could literally condense time, failure time, to like just a few days, if that, or skip over it entirely and go right to the good stuff and not have to suffer as much, if at all. And you get to rejuvenate your body and bring health and healing in from the quantum field and live in a 99% reality as it is above, as it is below, heaven on earth. Want to take a chance? It's the greatest deal in the world. When you live by the law, the spiritual law, and the universe has your back, and God's going to love you no matter what. And the Holy Spirit's got your back, and it's going to be amazing. And new doors are going to open up. And you don't got to run away from yourself. 
and you're still going to be all right. That's the greatest gift in the world. What was that the evil Knievel said? He goes, you know, the old stunt guy from the 70s, motorcycle stuntman. He says, God put you here on earth and says, do the best you can. And I'm going to watch over you. And when it's all over with, I'm going to take you home. He says, that's the greatest deal in the world. <laughs> Live the adventure. Be the cause, not the effect. Whatever you do, don't feel sorry for yourself. Because you're put on this earth to create and to make stuff happen. And we say, be the cause. Wow. All right. So that's my day. 79. And I get so many different avenues of meditation that I want to do now. From going down into the cell, healing major organs, working with the quantum field, increasing my magnetism, honing up my chakras, and my perceptions, in my healing, and becoming superhuman, and knowing how to feed your brain so it can work, how to feed your heart, which is a major spiritual center, but which, which also kicks off the most magnetic frequency in your body. We're thinking about the tree of life and the chakra system. One's Jewish, one's Hindu, but you know what? They're very much intertwined and a lot of similarities. And how do I know? Because I did my homework. And I studied with some rabbis over at the Jewish Center in West Bloomfield, Michigan. Before COVID, of course, we used to have brown bag lunches over there. And I grabbed all the information that I could because I knew it was worth something. All right, can't do. Shut your mouth, right? That's what you're thinking. <laughs> uh, you put your pens down. I want to give you a challenge to meditate. If you haven't done it, slow your body down. Slow your breathing down. Stop your racing thoughts. If you're doing, uh, if you're still partying, going out and eating THC edibles and drinking beer and wine and, and you think that's normal, I'm going to ask that you stop. I'm going to ask that you give your body a break. I'm going to ask that if you're on prescription pills, take a look at them. Which ones do you really need? Go natural if you can. For some ailments, your body wants to heal all the time. That's a really cool part. It'll always take you back. But when you when you tax it to the point where it becomes exhausted, it's hard for you to really reach states of perception, of deep introspection, and introduce healing on a natural level. Peace will be far off, at least two months off. But you got to be clean off everything. That's the real challenge for some of us. But then something amazing happens. And the real you starts to emerge out of that chaos that you created. <laughs> for, for whatever reason and you hold on to it because that's your armor that becomes your identity you think you can't exist without it that might have got you through your 20s but when you get older it's not enough and you're going to want spirit you're going to want to experience true manic bliss of the universe and all of its infinite possibilities 
that are waiting for you. You won't have to be dependent on other people who are unenlightened and always bring you disappointment because that's all they're capable of doing. And that's all they'll ever do for you unless they change themselves. I asked some people tonight, how many have gone through their own Kundalini awakening? And a lot of people have not, which is really interesting to me. So I have, and I should do a show about that pretty soon because all these things are kind of colliding in together. So enough. I've been, I, I told you I was going to leave. I'm still talking. That's the way it is with me. <laughs> anyway. All right. I am Ted Kean too. I want to thank you for watching the show. I hope you got some ideas for the new year, how you want to project yourself in your new reality. If you want to do resolutions, got to know, you got to know it's not going to stick because it's not going to be here in your, in your uh, subconscious mind, your reticular mind, all the short goals. Yeah. You know, you'll stick with it for a while, but you're not going to have heart after a while because they have to become long standing loops of behavior. Your actions have to be, so habitual for them to be long lasting. And those become your actions. Your actions become your defining character. Thoughts, habits, actions, character. All right. Well, if you have any questions, and I'm sure you do, you can always give me a call at 248-277-6141. And you can also email me at tedcantu at gmail.com. And you want to find me online, you can always do that at tedcantu.com. It's even make it simple for you. And remember, if you want to get to your heights of the new you, you can do it. If I can do it, you can too. So this has been Ted Cantu coming at you live. And I want to say good night. Think big. This could be your year. And if you have any questions, give us a shout. I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you online.